All right, shall we go in? Yeah. Well. You scared? Well, I am now after hearing that story. Look at it. The weather just turned absolutely sour. Imagine if this display went all like Night of the Museum on our asses and came to life. That'd be wicked. Once again, it's windy. But we've made it to the fence. And And I sort of just sprung out of bed, which is really nice because the last few days I've been really tired. The guys next to us are really loud in their tent, so we figured let's beat the crowds out and go and do these hikes this morning. And I see the Humps, Maluka's Cave, and apparently part of the rabbit proof fence, which is really cool because I wanted to sit in Esperance and we didn't. And being seven, there's not gonna be that many people out there because all these guys are really slow risers in the morning and then it gets busy around midday. But it looks like it's gonna be pretty hot today, huh? So, yeah, that's our plan this morning. So the following is the crazy but super interesting story of how Mulka's Cave came to be named Mulka's Cave. It's a little bit distressing and quite gory, but it's such a cool Aboriginal folklore story. Mulka was the illegitimate son of a woman who fell in love with a man to whom marriage was forbidden. As a result, Mulka was born with crossed eyes. Even though he grew up to be an outstandingly strong man of colossal height, his eyes crossed prevented him from aiming a spear accurately and becoming a successful hunter. Out of frustration, Mulka turned to catching and eating human children, and he became the terror of the district. He lived in Mulka's cave, where the impressions of his hands can still be seen much higher than those of any ordinary man. His mother became increasingly concerned with Mulka, and when she scolded him for his antisocial behaviour, he turned on his own mother and killed her. This disgraced him even more and he fled the cave heading south. Aboriginal people were outraged by Mulka's behaviour and set out to track down the man who had flouted all the rules. They finally caught him near Danville Young, 156 kilometres south west of Hayden. Because he did not deserve a proper ritual burial, they left his body for the ants, a grim warning to those who break the law. Wow, well, so I'm assuming there's some handprints, but that's, oh, it comes up really well on the camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are some sketches. I am not good at interpreting the stuff, but there's a small handprint there and another little one there. Oh, they're everywhere actually. That comes up better in the camera than our eyes. Yeah, there's, that one there. there's some really good ones here. But all over this wall, there's just handprints. I think they said it's like 470 what? like motifs on the walls. And that is the word they use, motifs. Because there are ones like all the way up here. You can't really see them so well anymore, but. So someone's come in here and counted all of these hands. That one's hard to see, but there's a really good one just here as well. This would have been a pretty crazy place to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our next stop of the day was called the Humps and it's just a short walk that weaves its way up across the mountain behind Mulka's Cave. It's got a great viewing point and you can also see some crazy rock formations and some lichen growing. They call this place the Poor Man's Wave Rock because of the way the lichen has coloured the rock to make it look all streaked similar to wave rock, but it's not actually the same sort of thing. Yeah. You're just waiting for the weather to pass. That noise is incredible. Yeah. No wonder the wind can create that type of fight. Yeah, the erosion. The erosion on it. It's beautiful up here, but it's about to rain, so we're going to head down before that gnarly storm comes at us. Go, go, go! Look at it, the weather just turned absolutely sour. <laughs> so we made it off the mountain, which is behind us, and got like slightly drenched in the process. Um, but we survived, no one fell down. 
and the squall has stopped but I reckon it's going to be pretty squally all day and my camera is drenched and I'm drenched but that was a fun walk, did you enjoy it? Yeah, that was cool. Oh, what a gross day. It is. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm so thankful we went early. Yeah. I was lying in bed, I was like quarter to seven, seven o'clock and I was like, I feel ready to get up. Let's go early and beat the crowds. But what we actually did in hindsight is beat the rain. Thank goodness. Look at this. It's just pouring down. Stop for breakfast. Trying we, to warm ourselves up. We came to get bread, but we've stopped to have pies because we can't have ourselves. Do my little human being eat too? I'm getting bad influences off you because usually I would have like one sausage roll and that's it. But because you always buy two things at the bakery, I'm like, oh, I should buy two things. So I had a sausage roll and a quiche. We absolutely picked the right day to have an editing day, huh? Mm, it is blowing a gale out there. We've been out this morning, obviously, and saw um, Mulker's cave. The kids and I have just been editing all afternoon. It's been so... Oh, well, it's not even the afternoon yet. What are we doing? We're going to get ourselves a milkshake, aren't we? And... We're go oh. I'm going to the toy soldier. But I'm going to that as well. So if that wasn't clear before, we're going to head across to over there and see some kind of cool miniature soldier display. Right. So we're going to quickly feed this gremlin, don't we? I'm not necessarily hungry, I'm just bored. And we have no treats to eat. Uh, lunch? Yeah, whatever 650 gets me. Next up on our list of random places. Yeah, we normally have fun, don't we? 8,000 toy soldiers, apparently. Imagine if this display went all like Night of the Museum on our asses and came to life. That'd be wicked. Look at them all. Oh, I want to collect toy soldiers now. Are you going back to school? Teacher, got a question. Teacher. This is Herbert, thank you. I know it's my school uniform, literally. And so is that blue tunic. Apparently this was the school building, this was the only building. And everyone would go to school in this building. And this one. This one. So that was a nice little intermission from our editing. Yeah, so we just we got some more reading materials. Just in case if we need to start a fire, we've got plenty of kindling. This is like Calberry, Broom, and Perth, basically. Um, and we're thinking we might. We drove out to Mulca Cave earlier today, but we didn't go through the rabbit proof fence. And our batteries are nearly flat, so we're thinking we might go for a quick drive out to the rabbit proof fence and get some photos and some footage just yeah. to <laughs> charge the batteries. And then tomorrow we're heading to Perth, so yeah. Once again, it's windy, but we've made it to the fence, and it literally is just one big ass long fence. So I've just come and hopped back in the car because it's really windy out there again and I'm honestly just so sick of the wind um, and there's a butt ton of flies so I've just given up and I'm sitting in the car. But Kieran's out there flying the drone but we're not really sure how it's going to work because there's so much wind.
state of WA if we broke your laws. <laughs> Find me. <laughs> so it's a very, very sad day. The silvery moon has died. All of those at home who knows what the silvery moon is, it would be very upset to hear that it is on its last legs. That is all it's emitting. Usually that thing lights up this entire tent. And more. It's a bit obnoxious. It's now. like a ridiculously obnoxious light and now we're down to our head torches. Well, oh, I'm sorry, Silvery Moon. Sorry, Dad and Andrew. Aww. And that's it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, give this video a like and a subscribe and leave us a comment. Join us next week as we unload in Perth and spend a couple of days with a mate in the city. We check out Nostalgia Box, Fremantle Prison and a couple of other cool little spots. So be sure to check us out next Wednesday. I'm, uh, at the moment I'm near uh, Wave Rock, um, my car's broken down, um, I'm hoping you'll be able to assist me, I know you're at Port Hedley, but um, I'm hoping this sand will travel up to you all the way up.